Hello and welcome to Airship 27 Productions podcast number 34. I'm Chief Engineer Rob Davis alongside my co-host Captain Ron Fortier via the internet and Skype. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we, we hope, after, yes. A, yeah, af, after the last couple of shows, snafus, you know. But anyways, before we, we launch into any of that, we have to, we have to pay the, the, the podcast bill, if you will. So here we go. We are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. You can find every episode of the Airship 27 podcast on comicspodcast.com each and every month. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Comic Frontline, YouTube, and of course, zone4podcast.com. <laughs> and there we are, commercial over. <laughs> Amen. And again, we're still up, so that's a good sign. Yep, yep. There's just a little bit of breakup, but every once in a while you get really clear. So, it will, like I said, we're going to give this a shot. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure, considering what, you know, Brant did with last issue, uh, last episode, uh, and let me just read <laughs> off that, that first agenda. Before fully getting into this December episode, we'd like to apologize the shortened episode last month, all of which was due to Skype giving us a hard time cutting out our connection. It seemed like every five minutes. Yeah. In the end, it was a minor miracle that we actually managed to get a show done. And a huge thanks goes to Sparky Brand Fowler, who managed to make what little we did record serviceable. So here's keeping all fingers crossed for the rest of this hour. Yep, we'll do the best we can. All right, take the next one, buddy. All right, well, Thanksgiving is in the rearview mirror. We truly hope all our loyal airmen had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, With that that day, we officially kicked off the holiday season, and at the end of the show, Ron is going to read a little poem written for the season by artist Gary Cotto, who adapted Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven for this little piece. We think you'll all enjoy it. He sent that. He sent that to uh, to me as well as a Christmas card. So, <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so, so you've read it. Pretty imaginative, isn't it? Oh, it, it, Gary's Jer- Gary's just full of imagination. He's he's an amazing guy. So yeah, it didn't surprise yeah. me at all. But he he sends out Christmas cards to all his pals every year. So uh, it, we're we're very privileged to get those from me. Not only did, did it have a poem, but it had several drawings in it too. So. Right, he draw. He draw yeah, we should tell our loyal airmen he draws all his own uh, Christmas cards. So right. they're all originals, and like yourself, you know, it, it's always a joy when we get them in the mail. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So, all right. Well, we we have a bunch of things that we have to talk about. So, uh, I'll take the next okay agenda, which is what's new at Airship Twenty Seven. Well, by the time this episode does there. We will have released our 23rd title of the year, and that is Mystery Men and Women, Volume 5. This volume features the debut of a shadow-like female named The Shrike, as was created by writer Jean Moyers. She appears in a full-length novella. Then we have a new Doc Atlas adventure by Michael Black and Ray Lovato. And finally, another great Nightbreaker story by Thomas DJ. Rob did all the interior illustrations and Canadian artist Ted Hammond the beautiful cover that graces this book and features Gene Warrior's The Shrike so I, I gotta tell you Rob when Gene saw the cover for this one <laughs> he, he immediately got a hold of Ted Hammond and I guess they're making a deal and he's gonna buy that cover aha yeah Cool. Yeah, he, he wants them. He wants to mount it and put it up in his office, and I don't blame him. No, I wouldn't either. That's it. It turned out beautifully. It, Ted, Ted does some beautiful women. Very, very sexy. Very, very. Uh, his style is very, very crisp. But uh, yeah. So, and what he did with this was just spectacular. Yeah, I mean, I mean we we definitely wanted the Shrike to have the cover spot. Because hopefully, I mean, you know, in speaking with Jean, and we do have plans, uh, this was her official debut as a pulp hero, a hero, hero, whatever. And, you, you know, folks hopefully are going to enjoy her. And there's a lot more Shrike on the way. 
So it just seemed natural for me that, that we launch her with a spectacular cover image, and, and Ted delivered that way beyond my own imagination, buddy. Yeah, it's it's definitely got that shadow feel to it, because it, that's essentially what she is as a, kind of a female shadow, and that and Ted captured that perfectly. Okay, so hey, uh, go ahead and take the next agenda. It's a good okay. segue. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Doc Atlas, uh, which is as good a place to segue into our very special announcement concerning Doc Atlas, writers Michael Black and Ray Lovato were childhood buddies who grew up loving action, uh, action adventure fiction to include the pulps. After college, both pursued different careers. Black in law enforcement and Lovato in various teaching and administrative jobs. Still, they never lost their enthusiasm for bigger-than-life heroes, which is what led them to creating Doc Atlas, their homage to heroes like Doc Savage and Jim Anthony. Over the years, they've written many Doc Atlas tales collected and published in various editions. Now, after all this time, they are joining the Airship 27 production family and will be writing Doc Atlas Adventures exclusively for us. Our mutual partnership will have them producing one Doc Atlas title per year, whether it's a new collection of shorts or full-length novels. We couldn't be any happier, and we'll soon be releasing a press release all over the Internet. And actually, I think you've already put some of that out if, 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 from what I've seen. And Bill and yeah. Ray, Bill and Ray are fantastic writers, and Doc Atlas is a bona fide pulp original we hope to bring to a larger audience via this new partnership. So stay tuned, loyal airmen. You are in for some great new Doc Atlas adventures starting in 2018. Right, and and you know what you said. Uh, I did get that press release out, and thanks to you for. Uh, assembling that that piece of art that accompanied it and i have to tell you rob i mean the instant i got this all over facebook and other pulp internet sites um the feedback that i received was immediately positive okay cool uh, um i i yeah I, I already knew uh, that at doc atlas had a following out there and we tapped right into it uh, a lot of our our friends and colleagues uh, immediately dropped me a line telling me how much they enjoyed the Doc Atlas adventures that Ray and Michael had already done and, you know, just couldn't help but receive this announcement uh, with unabashed, you know, happiness because <laughs> we're pretty much guaranteeing them now that at least they're going to see one new Doc Atlas book a year. So, again, like, I, like you know, you just read off. It's, it's really my hope that we can support Michael and Ray uh, with this character and bring him to a much larger audience. Uh, you know, again, all this came from them offering us that short story that just appeared, The Death Ray, in uh, Mystery Men and Women Volume 5. So if any of you loyal airmen out there who you know, may not, not be familiar with the character... Uh, here's a good opportunity. Make sure you pick up a copy of Mystery Men and Women, Volume 5. Uh, and that'll give you an introduction to who Doc Atlas is, his team, what he's about, and a little bit of taste of what's coming down the road. Yeah, and as usual with all, with all of our books, that book is available on Amazon uh, and, and Kindle and in our PDF store. And eventually, uh, as soon as the Radio Archives gets to it, the, it'll be on uh on Audible as well. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm really gonna. I, I, you know, you and I talk about this in various episodes, and you are way still too busy. But uh, <laughs> again, I'm being, I'm, you know, you're, you're partially retired, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm semi-retired is what I call it. But yeah, I'm still working at least at three days a week, a full eight hours, and then maybe another half day. So yeah. Yeah, and what that's what I'm saying. And believe me, uh, you know, I'm telling you right now, the day comes when you put that all aside, okay? Uh, basically, every day is my own, buddy. And, you know, as much as I want to stay creative, and I do, and I spend a lot of hours in this office behind this desk, um, since we hooked up with Radio Archives, the temptation not to listen to some of these, you know, just get the best of me. And, you know, and, I, and, and I'm, 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 you know, very 
uh, picky as to which ones I want to hear. Right. And so I've had, you know, and I've done that, you know, over the last couple of years. But every single book that I have, you know, taken the time to sit back and listen has just been fantastic. I mean, you know, a, a tip of our pulp fedora to Tom Brown and his, his crew of uh, readers, voice actors, because, I mean, really, they do the best that's out there in the market today. And we're really fortunate to be hooked up with them. So, yeah, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who ends up reading Mystery Men Volume 5 and gets the uh, you know, the task of reading the first ever Shrike adventure. That'll yeah. be interesting. Yeah, that'll be yeah, it'll be real interesting to see how that comes out. Uh, same thing with Doc Atlas, since this will be the, I, as far as I know. I don't know. I don't think that they've had uh, had it read by anybody yet. But uh, this will be the first time Doc Atlas will be read by someone as well. You're you're right, exactly, exactly. So I'm I'm you know I'm sure uh, Michael and Ray will listen to this episode. They they're they're <laughs> big fans of the show. Yeah, I'm, and I, they're probably sitting there going, "Oh my God, yeah, here we go." So, yeah, again, you know, all you loyal airmen, uh, if, if you've got a long commute, you know, you take a train or a car, uh, you know, try one of these Radio Archives Airship 27 uh, audio books. I, I think you'll really, really get a kick out of them. All right. So on the next agenda, we have and then <laughs> our next our next and final book of uh, 2017 will be. Tales of the Golden Dragon by Barbara Duran, which is the third in this fantasy adventure series she began several years ago. Claws of the Golden Dragon, and then followed that up with last year's Wings of the Golden Dragon. The action all takes place in the fictional northwest town of Strikeport, where all kinds of supernatural occurrences are centered, whereas the city and its people are protected by two masked kung fu heroes known as Tiger and Dragon. Gary Carter once again provides the interior illustrations, and Rob once again did the cover. Win out, this will be our 24th title of 2017, and that's what I call a fairly good production uh, record for two retired guys, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Well, yeah, one retired guy and one semi-retired guy. <laughs> exactly. That, yeah, that's you know, two I, a month. Yep, that's you know, about I, right. Tw- 24, 20, 24, you know, we, you, do, you know, easily easy math, okay, which mm-hmm. is basically uh, a production record of two books a month uh, for the entire year. And, you know, it's it's a goal like you and I have, though we we don't want to jinx it by vocalizing it every year. But any any time any time we do more than eighteen or nineteen books, yeah, I think is is a success, absolutely like a whopping success. Yeah, some months we go, oh wow, we did we really didn't get one out this month. But then sometimes the next month we'll get three or four out. So it it, it averages out. Sometimes the, the they they come in and in gangs and bunches, and then there's a big gap. Uh, it, it would be nice if we could if we could get on like a we had a regular schedule where okay this. We're going to have this book out then, but that's not how it works with us. We don't really have deadlines, so it's just as they come in. I mean, I mean, and and you know, while we're talking about this, I mean, we should take an opportunity to say uh, a heartfelt thanks to the people who really make this possible, which is all our our talented writers and artists who contribute to each and every one of these books. And you know, as as Rob is saying. It would be really, really nice if, if we could, you know, have some kind of a system in place that guaranteed, you know, two books a month and we could set a, a much more less hectic and leisurely pace of getting things done. But I was just talking to a, a good colleague here in Port Collins the other day, Rob, and we were talking about Airship 27. He was asking me questions about how, how we operate, et cetera. And I told him, I said, one of the things that you and I, you know, actually, are you know, take into account whenever we start a new project. Okay, is the fact that they're done by human beings who have their own lives, and sometimes those lives get interrupted, so that it's it's really you know, nobody's getting rich doing this. These guys contribute uh, their time and their talent. So when something happens to the the flow of a book. 
I'm not about to just, you know, you know, knock somebody off the book because they're left, all right, turning a story in or they're late turning some artwork in. I'll, I'll never do that, okay? I mean, again, like I said, these guys are overly generous and kind to us. So if we have to wait, then we wait. It's what we do. But at the same time, <laughs> I'm very, you know, aware of the fact that when new writers come to us and say, hey, I'd like to write for Airship 27, the first thing I do, Rob, is make sure to tell them, well, okay, but are you a patient soul? Because <laughs> if you don't have to pay to wait, please go work with somebody else. Uh, you and I have had on the occasions, and you'll back me up on this, we have had books basically started, assembled, and put out like within a month. Yes. I mean, it's rare, but we've seen it happen. It does happen, at yeah. The same, yeah. At the same time, we've seen people run into all kinds of, again, like I'm talking about human issues where books take two, three, maybe four years to get done. And, it's and, and you know, again, there's nothing that can be done for that. It's just, like I said, I'm not about to cut people loose because they suffer some human tragedy. No, I, we're not that heartless, all right? And and so, again, if, if you know, we've lost a few writers. A few writers have gotten fed up. And, oh, I've been waiting two years for my story to get published and whatever. But here's the thing, and Rob, I think, again, you'll back me up on this, okay? We're, we're in pretty good communications with all our colleagues out there in the new pulp movement, uh, especially those who do what we do, you know, small press publishers. And their situation is no better than our own. No. So, no. It, it, no. so it, it's, it's the nature of business. And, you know, like I said, and that's why, you know, bringing this whole conversation to its full circle, uh, when you and I can sit back and go, wow, uh, Airship 27 put out 24 books this year. Uh, you know what, Rob? That's the eggnog. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> yeah, put a little rum in mine. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but absolutely yes. We 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 sometimes, like I said, we sometimes have uh, one will come out within a month, and then another one it, it'll be years before it finally comes out. Yeah, somebody somewhere, it, it, a book's got four writers in it, and one of one of the writers runs into a snag. And but if, if it's an anthology, sometimes we'll bump somebody to the next edition of the anthology. But we don't always have that luxury. So sometimes it just has to wait, but it's it's the nature of the beast. Sometimes we get a get an artist and he starts working on a book and he gets half of it done and boom he runs into a personal problem. So we have to wait. But but yeah, we, I mean yeah. I, one one incident I recall, Rob, we had an artist, a new artist, doing illustrations for us. He had turned in I don't know maybe two or three illustrations. They looked absolutely fantastic. And I think you'll remember this story. The the, the name eludes me right now. But along about halfway through the book, he, he got into a severe car accident and broke his leg in multiple places. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember, remember that, that story. story? Yeah. Yeah, and so he, he, he couldn't work. I mean, he, <laughs> his leg took so long to recover. It took almost a full year for him to be able to sit at his desk uh, without pain. Right. And start drawing again. Yeah, he, so, he yeah, felt yeah. bad, but you know, we 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 both went to him and go, well, no, 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 <laughs> we we completely understand. You know, what if I broke my arm? <laughs> We'd have to wait a little yeah. while till I got the, till my arm healed. It's just yeah. it, it happens. Stuff happens. Yeah. It's so, yeah. uh, and then we deal with it. <laughs> yeah, we do. So again, yeah, the the the, <laughs> the the trials and tribulations of small press publishing. Believe me, all yep. right. Uh, but again, you know, and and, not, and I'm and when, hey, hey, folks, this is the holiday season. We're not trying to put a sour note on any. Of this. Oh Lord, no, no. Uh, we're, actually, this I, I don't think it is a sour note. I think it's a it's it shows that we 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 care about the guys that work with us, guys and gals that work with us, and we right. we want to we want to treat right. them and, as right. we'd want to be treated. Right, and we keep a positive attitude. That's hopefully what we share with our creators, all of them. And lo and lo and behold, there are the results. All right, yep. Uh, we get things done. So, you know, that's the reputation that we've garnered over the last decade. A company that puts up quality material, and it takes a little bit of you know, uh, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> but in the end, it's really worth it. Yep, it is definitely. So, yeah, once okay. this last book's out, well, that'll be twenty-four. So, what's next? What is coming Go up next? It. 
Secret Agent X Volume 6. It's no secret that Secret Agent X is one of our all-time favorite pulp heroes here at Airship 27, and that Rob, that's me, loves illustrating his new adventures by our writers. Well, we're very happy to let you know that Volume 6 of this series is now in full production, and I'm not only uh, going to do the interiors as I always do, but I've come up with what Ron says is a fantastic composition for the cover as well. Uh, it, it, it just I was reading one of the stories and the and this image came to my head and I go, that's the cover. Uh, so this volume will contain three brand new Secret Agent X action pack tales. It kicks off with a full length novella by Fred Adams Jr. and then we have two shorts. One by new writer, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, so I apologize. Every, it, people who listen to this podcast pretty much expect me to mispronounce at least one person's name in each episode. So here it comes. Uh, Ka- Kashik Karforma. And other, I still, that's, that's how I would say it. Okay. Uh, that's exactly that's, how I uh, You know, Kashik Karforma, and the other by veteran ex-chronicler Frank Schildiner. And that, that's... <laughs> hey, uh, just, just a little background on this, and, and again, uh, anytime, anytime we put out a secret agent X book, it's exciting for both of us. It's, again, it's like you, you just read; we both love this character. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of my favorites, he, definitely. Yeah, he he just sends them to some fantastic adventures, and honestly, the uh, the full length novella by Fred Adams Jr. Uh, had me. You know, whipping through that thing as I was reading and editing it, I mm-hmm. think it's one of the best secret agent X adventures we've ever ever been given. Yeah, so I would. Kudos to I Fred. would tend to agree. Yeah, he, I, if Fred really caught him, really caught the character yep. very well, and and the and so, a couple of the background characters as well came out very well. But uh, yeah, I I enjoyed his story quite a bit. I enjoyed all three of these stories. They're all excellent stories for secret agent right. X. Right, and I'm so, I'm, so, I'm about so a third go, of the so way yeah. through. Well, again, he's, it's, I don't know if it's the character that brings out, you know, uh, the enthusiasm of the writers, if you will. I mean, Frank, you know, Childiner has been with this character since uh, we started uh, doing Secret Agent X books. And obviously, uh, he has an affinity for the character, mm-hmm. as we'll talk about again in another few minutes. But I wanted to, to bring up uh, an introduction, if you will, to all our loyal airmen out there, to Cossack Carforma. Classic actually is a native of Ceylon. <laughs> so again, you know, it's a, he he approached me, um, you know, via the internet uh, months ago, and somehow or other, Rob had, had come across Airship Twenty Seven online, uh, had read some of our books, and Hang on. Did. and you know, here he is writing me, and obviously uh, uh, his command of English. Uh, yeah, trust me, exceeds my own by, by <laughs> leagues. All right, I, I was so taken, but his name, you know, caught me off guard, and I'm saying to myself, "Well, okay, so this isn't your typical, you know, uh, Harry, Pete, and Joe." And so I said, "Classic, if you don't mind my asking, uh, where where are you from? You're not American, are you?" And so yeah, he immediately gets back to me, said, "Oh no, no, I'm from Ceylon." <laughs> I got all, fell out of my chair. I said, here we go again, all right? Uh, the beauty of, of what we do and the Internet, okay, and, and how the world is shrunk, okay? Because here is this talented, talented young man. He's an editor. I believe he's an editor in his job uh, where he lives. Somehow or other discovered New Pulp, discovered Airship 27 in, our, in our, some of our books, and really wanted to write a secret agent X story for us. And I was just simply bowled over when he sent me the idea for his plot, and it has to do a little bit with a little known historical fact. Uh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. So trust me, after he turned it in, Rob, um, and, and you personally came up with the idea for that really great cover, it comes from Kozik's own story. Right, and so I, I I dropped him a line. I did let him know. I said, "Hey, by the way, as is uh, the cover feature, we'll we'll you know focus on a scene from your particular story." Well, he's all excited about that one. <laughs> he can't wait to see this book now. Okay, so well, I hated so to dis- I hated to disappoint Frank because he's gotten what three different covers 
now. Yes, he has. <laughs> yes, he has. So uh, he might be a little disappointed he didn't get the cover this time. But but this this one, as I was reading through it, I just went, well, that's that's the image for the cover right there because it was such a pulpy uh, uh, part of his story uh, that that it just it lent itself very well to to a cover scene, and it didn't it didn't fall in within the story where I could do an individual. Uh, spot illustration for it, but I, I thought that's perfect for the cover. So I, I'm going to work on that. I'm working on the interior illustrations now. But uh, after I get all those finished, then I'll start trying to, to work out the uh, the details on that cover. But that, that it should be a lot of fun. Well, I mean, if you realize the rough that you the, the minute I saw the rough that you sent me, I knew it was it was from Cossack story. And it was like, you know, one of those slap my head moments and went, oh, my God, of course, that's perfect. All right. Yeah. And I, it, it, it's pulpy. It's totally pulpy. So uh, I, I think we're teasing our listeners enough as it is. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the start of next year, you will be seeing yeah. Secret Agent X, Volume 6. So hang in there. It may, it may be the first note, book of 2018. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note. Uh, we want to remind you of the one-shot Secret Agent X comic. This being the original 29-page Secret Agent story written by me called Race with the Devil. It pits the man of a thousand faces against a group of German spies operating in America just prior to our entry into World War II. Both of us think Secret Agent X is one of the greatest characters to come out of the pulps. So you loyal airmen, keep your eyes peeled at this comic book thriller. It should be out in a few more weeks. Now, two things I want to add to that. The first being, uh, although Frank did not get the cover spot on the next anthology <laughs> book, uh, both of us had a few pages that we needed to fill at the end of the comic book. And I thought it would be a really, really cool idea if Frank would write us a little essay about his thoughts and feelings about this character that he loves so much, and God bless him, he turned it around within a few days, and so the book does contain a bonus essay at the back of the comic adventure by none other than writer Frank Childiner about his experiences and his fondness for this particular character, so there you go. And uh, the, the folks at uh, Indie Planet have, have already printed a few days ago, Frank got his copies in the mail. And so that's when I first realized it was out when I was on Facebook. And there was Frank plastering his, his comic <laughs> covers all over the page, all happy and everything else. I have to ask, Rob, so have you gotten in your order yet? My copies came. That's the, that's how Frank got his. They're two of the ones okay. that I ordered. Now, I've been okay. checking Indie Planet like almost every day. And the link to order them online has not appeared yet. They're on, they're right. on they're they're up at, at uh, Kablam, which is the printer, and their online store is called Indie Planet, but the, they have not put it up at Indie Planet yet. I, I think what happens with them is they get a bunch of they they get a bunch of comic books in and then they, they print them all and they printed these really quick, which really stunned me. This is the first time a book that I've sent to them has gotten back to me within 10 days. I, wow! I, I mean, it's usually thirty days or more between right. the time I send it to them and the time I receive the copies. This time it was less than ten days, so I was completely blown <laughs> away with that. But I think what happens is they get a bunch of books like that, and then they wait and put them all up on Indie Planet all at once. So I'm I'm, I'm going to check again at, right after the podcast here and see if it's up. And if it is, I'll, I'll get the yeah. link and and Sparky can put it up at the website. Right, and get the link to me as well. Right, and absolutely. I will, you know, and I will spread it all over the internet as well. We'll get it up uh, on Bill Tom's uh, coming attraction site and all that. Yeah, and I'll uh, put it this, on. The, this, I'll put it on the Redbud Studio website too. So, yep, yep. So, and I got to tell you, uh, I mean, e- even Frank posting pictures of his copies uh, has already generated uh, a nice little buzz, and and so fans are, are really. Uh, curious about this, they want to know what it was and when it's coming out when they get their hands on it. So, hang in there, loyal airmen. Uh, it's just like Rob said. I, I think it's printing anymore. My my experience, Rob, when we've done this with uh, Kablam, is they usually wait thirty days 
before they post on their Indie Planet site. So yeah, yeah, it might be thirty days. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. again, uh, it'd be nice if we can get this out before you know the the word out before Christmas. But if we don't, we'll get it out as soon as it's available. So not to worry. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Okay. All right. All right. So you take. I'll let you take the next little one. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is a this is a small announcement. The Moon Man, Volume Two. With any luck, we should have we should have all of our uh, stories in for the Moon Man th- anthology, and it should be out early in 2018. Uh, I, 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 that hasn't gotten started yet, but we got artist Richard June has completed seven of his twelve interior illustrations, and we already have a wonderful new Mike Files cover ready to go so and I think I've got all the files I just haven't assembled them into the into the InDesign file yet but once all that stuff's in it shouldn't take but a few days for me to get it up get it get it all assembled and then send it off to the proof proofers and then within a week or two after that we'll uh, we'll have it up at Amazon so it, it's just a matter right, of yeah, him finishing yeah. it up yeah it's it's, uh, it's gonna be a fun fun way to start the new year uh you know juggling between classic pulp characters uh, like we're talking here <laughs> right uh between the moon man and secret agent x uh yeah nice way to launch 2018 for sure um and uh, you know moon man is one of those wonky uh really really different kind of uh heroes and and fans absolutely love his adventures as far as richard john's illustrations uh he, the guy's knocking it out of the ballpark and he is uh He's the guy, again, we talk about people's different occupations in this world. And for those people out there listening, uh, Richard's day job is that he is an optometrist <laughs> who, uh, who likes to draw, okay? Uh, and we came across him because uh, he lives near a university where my old buddy, uh, artist Jeff Butler, uh, was teaching a class in common graphic illustrations and Richard took the class and so Jeffrey was so taken with his talent that he actually uh, connected me and Richard and said this is somebody you want to look at Ron so when I saw his work I, I really liked it a great deal and so I think Rob he's done t- I know he's done two books right. for us already maybe even three this may be number four for us yeah i so, I, I, have, I don't keep track of that so i don't know but i think i know at least two others maybe maybe three right so uh again you know when he's when he when he's not being a doctor and taking care of people's eyesight <laughs> richard june is like sitting at home drawing for airship 27 so there you go okay uh, so you're gonna take all right so now Okay. What, what I did, what I did with the agenda for this particular episode, uh, was off the top of my head. But feel free, Rob, as we go through this this last big agenda piece, uh, to throw in any thoughts or ideas. Because uh, what I wanted to do, after a few of the episodes we did this year, uh, some of our listeners dropped me a line to the effect of. You know, you know. Tell us more about what's coming down the line. You know, that's like the best part of your show. We're really, we're really curious <laughs> and intrigued by you know what we can expect. Okay. So that's why I added the final paragraph to our agenda uh, for the December episode here, and it's what's coming in 2018. All right. As ever, we've always a half a dozen books, projects in development, and in 2018, you will be seeing. More Sherlock Holmes adventures, a full-length Purple Scar novel, a new full-length Quartermain book, plus many more favorites such as Domino Lady and Bass Reeves Frontier Marshal. Our prolific writer pal Fred Adams alone has another three or four novels coming your way. <laughs> Convention-wise, the Airship 27 group will be traveling to Chicago again for the annual Windy City Pulp and Paper Con, which, for other circumstances, will be our only pulp show appearance in 2018. So if you want to see Rob and Ron together doing their comedy shtick, start <laughs> making your plans now for a really great show. Naturally, there'll be all all kinds of things coming your way. Uh, with, again, like I said, I probably forgotten while I was putting this together. 
but uh, it's way too soon to reveal some of those. Simply rest assured, Airship 27 will continue to strive to bring all you loyal airmen the finest in new pulp fiction available. We thank all you for your continued support. We couldn't do any of this without each and every one of you. So and, and any other projects uh, okay. that we can tackle them with? Well, I've got my I've got my little I've got a, uh, a file box here with with index cards in it. It's my it's my way to keep yep. track of things. And I got it sitting here next to me, and I'm looking at it. And it's, I've got you know, what's coming up: Tales of the Golden Dragon, Mystery Men number five, uh, Secret Agent X number five, number six. Actually, it says five on there, but it's actually number six. And then uh, there's a card in here. Uh, there's a, a novella. That Ron is working on for Moonstone that I may pencil. I'm not going to tell the character's name because I I don't think you want to want to divulge that at this point. But uh, right, right, you're right. That, be, is, that is a, that is a big secret. Right. Yeah, secret. I didn't I didn't think you wanted to diverge that divert die. Well, tell that one. But <laughs> too much eggnog. Oh man, it. too much rum in that eggnog. Uh, but yeah, I did, but that one's in here. That card's in here. And then there's one from there's a novel from uh, Gene Moyers. Uh, it, it's a, a Zeppelin uh, a novel, I believe, from Gene Wires. That's in here, and then there's a, a, a what was it? What was the name of that uh, that science fiction series we did with three three against the stars? There's a sequel to that. There oh, that's a, right. That's right. The, yeah. yeah, Joe Bonadon's uh, Space Marine. Series. Yeah. So yeah, and the title is. You want me to give the title? Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, this is Mechmen from Canis Nine. I don't think that gives yeah. anything away. But uh, no, yeah, you no, we, in fact, the the only holdup for that book, which is the sequel, uh, to his Three Against the Stars, uh, was us finding illustrators. Right. And so, so it, it seemed like in a period of maybe a week, Rob, I find I, I I recruited. I won't say found, but you know, I recruited uh, several new illustrators to the Airship 27 bullpen, and one of them uh, was a fellow eager to do uh, this science fiction book for us. So that's that's actually, you know, in process. Uh, and let's mention the fact that uh, a big surprise to both of us was that our good friend from Captain Action Enterprises, yeah, none other than, none other than Ed Cotto, came to us this year when he saw... My, my, you know, recurring plea for illustrators. And so, well, I like to draw. Would you guys, you know, want to give me a chance? So, you know, <laughs> I, I'd seen some of Ed's sketches on Facebook, and he puts he puts up quite a few. And I was taken by them, but I, I was not aware of uh, how much of uh, an art background he had, Rob, until he started sending you and me some samples. And I think both of us were blown away with, with how really, really talented Ed is. Uh, enough so that we gave him uh, Thomas McNulty's uh, seafaring adventure book, uh, The Adventures of Captain Graves. And okay. he's illustrating for the, uh, that for us right now. After a uh, few months of doing the uh, roughs, uh, he's settled down now to doing the completed pencils and inks. And the few pieces we've seen are gorgeous. Yeah, I, that's, a, that's one I don't have a card for. <laughs> Adventures of Captain Graves. Of Captain Graves. Yep. Okay, loyal loyal listeners, that you just heard me put a new card into my file filing box. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, and I'll put there. I'll put the artist on there later. But we don't have time for yep. that. So let's, let's let's see what else is in here. Uh, Mechman from Canis. And then there's a another Bay Phantom story, another novel coming down the pipe. Right as well. from Chuck from Chuck Miller. Right, and that that's yep. in here. And then the last one, the last new one I have in here. Now there's more stuff, but I just haven't got a card for it for them. Is that Moon Man number two that R Richard June is doing for us? So and then right. that's then I then after that there's, there's a bunch of blank cards that I need to start writing up. But uh, oh, it's gonna be. There is going to be a new book uh, 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 called "Code Name Intrepid." Code Name uh, Intrepid by a new writer. By a new writer uh, that was brought to us by Michael Black, okay. and you and I met him last year at Indie Planet. His name is Robert Mendenhall. Oh, okay. 
All right, and he's a he's a former uh, military man, retired, and so he came up with this idea of a pulp, you know, action team working for the Pentagon just prior to World War II called uh, uh, the Intrepid Teams. Ergo, the title of his book is uh, Codename Intrepid, and I believe it features five of their adventures. And so I, I recently recruited an artist to work on that. Oh, I know what we recruited. Uh, you know, as we're talking, the light bulbs are going on, Rob. Okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're going to love this one. Um, James Lyle is illustrating Ooh. this book. Ooh. Oh, that and should for you lo- and, and for you loyal airmen, if that doesn't ring any bells, uh, think Domino Lady. Yeah. James is the fellow who illustrated those books. And this all came about, Rob, when James wrote me uh, a little while back uh, one day and said, I know you guys haven't got the next Domino Lady book ready. I think we've got maybe one uh, or two stories for a volume three. So he's like, well, you know, he says, I'm, I'm caught up on some of my projects. Would you have anything else available for me? Well, wow. Okay. When an artist of, of his caliber says that to me, I don't waste any time, buddy, all right? So I, I dug through the files, and there was, you know, Codename Intrepid. I wrote James back. I gave him some idea of the concept of, of the book, the project, and the team. He loved it. He went, oh, my God, that's so pulpish. Yeah, I'll, I'll illustrate that for you. Cool. So I sent him, so I sent him uh, those stories, and he's working on those as we speak. Very cool. Yeah, another uh, thing that I, I did read that I did want to bring up, Rob, because I'm very excited by it. Uh, I have been extremely proud of the two Bass Reeves books that we've put out thus yeah. far. Yes, yes. And, you know, because it's, it's a personal thing between you and me that, you know, we're devoted to helping uh, increase um, familiarity in the public about this, this great American black lobbying all right and so you know we've had the good fortune of uh wrangling if you will use the pun uh some mm-hmm. some great western writers to help us out and put out the first two volumes uh, volume three as i said is now in production i'm collecting stories and volume three rob features a full length novella by none other than oklahoma writer r.a jones yeah my old buddy yeah my old simidar buddy yeah yep yeah, and uh, Ari love, loves doing westerns. Please. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, well, you know, Oklahoma, definitely. It, yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, he's he's always wanted to be a western writer. So you yeah. you you've helped him uh, get do a bucket one of his bucket list items. So he's he's now a right, western right, writer. Right, so. yeah, we should yeah we should mention the fact that he does do the uh, Jason Mankiller western series for right. us, the man who cried blood. <laughs> yeah, so there's another oh, he, card. He, he, <laughs> yeah, he, he lets loose. I already lets loose when he does these things. And just so you know, you know, I am bugging him about doing another seminar for us. Okay, that, that be, that's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like. Obviously, I like the character. I mean, I mean, I drew her adventures for a couple of years there. So, yeah, yeah. And she's she's the reason I have had a comic book career. I think. Uh, it, 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 I made my name uh, drawing that book. So, as an artist, all right, very lucky. So, as you can see, loyal airmen, like I said, we we could we could honestly, Rob and I could just sit here, and and he goes through his files and me goes through mine, and we'd probably be here uh, for another solid hour talking to you about some of the great projects that are in development at Airship Twenty Seven. Uh, in, in various stages, but I don't think we're going to have any problems at all, Rob. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, putting out another twenty-four books in twenty eighteen. No, you know, even if we just did sequels to some of the anthologies that we did every year, that that we we would stay pretty busy. I mean, we've got there's the, there's, there's you know there's Sherlock Holmes, there's there's oh, Secret yeah. Agent X, there's Jim Anthony, there's you know I could just go down that list. We could do twenty-four books just doing. Doing some oh. of those, Quatermain. And, and, yeah, and, yeah. And look, and, and, and allow and allow me to toot our, our personal horn here, okay? Because uh, I am, I am, you know, I, I had to, to put aside some of my personal projects uh, most of November because of my teaching gig at the local community college. 
which wrapped up uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It was a ball. I had a blast. Enough so that the college does want me to come back, Rob, uh, in February and do it again. Yeah, didn't didn't didn't, so, didn't you also say that they wanted to expand that a little bit, make it a little yeah, longer? Yeah, or? yeah. The, the critique critique forms that my students filled out and turned in, their 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 one and only critique the class was it wasn't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, 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 so yeah, so my director, my director at the college, was laughing when she read them. And she goes, all it says is you did a great job, and they want more of it. So she and I sat down and talked about it, and I will be doing a 10-week course starting in February instead of eight weeks. So there you go. That is so uh, cool. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it was really rewarding, Rob. Uh, one of the coolest things I've ever done. I absolutely loved it. I had great students. and So so anyways, I put aside some of my personal projects that you and I have talked about during the course of the year. And one of those uh, is one that I'm within one or two days now getting Ooh. ready to get back to, and that's and that's the next Brother Bones adventure. Yes, yes, yeah, pl- yeah. People are looking for that. To, <laughs> yeah, because the, this one, which I started, like I said, almost two months, got to be the longest single Brother Bones adventure I've ever written. And by the time I finish it, I'm hoping to have it done by Christmas. Uh, I will be close to having another 60,000 words assembled in, in New Brother Bones Adventures, which obviously means a new collection. Yep. So something else for you know our fans to look forward to in 2018. And uh, then it'll be uh, you know, on to other things and try to juggle whatever I can with starting another class in February. But I do want to get Brother Bones going uh, and some other things. I'm sure, I'm sure I have loyal fans out there who are going, well, gee, when are you going to do another Captain Hazard? Okay, so, okay, so yes, someday. All right, but right now uh, we got to focus on this stuff. And I know I'm watching the old clock, uh, my King Kong clock up on the wall in my office, and we're coming around towards the end of the hour, buddy. So as I had promised, um, are you still picking me up halfway decent? Yeah, occasionally you're blipping out, so you know there. An, an apology to to the to our listeners. We still had a little bit of trouble with the Skype connection, but at least he didn't drop out completely. We had a couple of we've had a, uh, several glitches here uh, uh, on this end. So, but but uh, this is much better than than it cutting out every five minutes. So maybe we yeah. can work this little glitch. I think it's it keeps telling me it's a network error. So it could actually this one could be on my end. And there it popped up again. It says poor network connection. Uh, so yeah. it, it could be on my end because the uh, the the Wi-Fi has been kind of slow today. So I'm betting that's probably that that's probably the problem here. So it's my end this time, not yours. But anyway, okay. yeah. Right. But it's well, again, we're, it was better. We, yeah. Well, what I wanted to say was we're going to get close to wrapping up this December episode with what I promised at the start of the show, <laughs> which is I am going to now read. Gary Cardo's Christmas poem that he sent to you and me and all his friends, yeah. all right, with apology that he put to Edgar Allan Poe. So with fingers crossed, I can get through it uh, loud and clear, and people can enjoy it as much as okay. you can. Okay, hang on just a sec. Yeah, we got yeah. another. I got another notification. Okay, go ahead. All right. You should be fine now. Once upon... <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a report of crime, cruelty, terrorism, and more, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis imagination, I mutter, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December, a jolly specter clad in red enters through my chamber door to rouse me from my sleep of sorrow, ever dreading what comes tomorrow. More crime, more terror, all the news that I deplore. There is no hope for man, I so ardently implore, only this hell and nothing more. Santa smiles so sweetly, Grin both strong and saintly. There are other paths that you need desperately explore. Be strong, for joy is yours if you the will to take it. 
things you've no control over, be aware, but in your mind ignore. For heaven should always be both a voyage and a far shore, and man shall live forevermore. Written by Mr. Gary Cotto. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Gary's amazing. I, I <laughs> love that poem. I, that's you know a lot what? of fun. I, that, that's one for the, for the album. I'm hanging on to that, Rob. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So anyway, we've gotten, and to, that's pretty, gotten to the end. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Yay, we did it. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Yeah, I, I see you put up on Facebook your picture of you and in, in yeah. Santa guys. Yeah, I actually got asked to do that again this year. But, Hot uh, dog! Well, Great. but I couldn't do it because it oh. was she. Wa- she wanted me to do it on Christmas Eve, and that's the day. When, oh. w- that's the day when Teresa and I go to her to her family's. And we uh, about about an hour's drive away from here, so I just couldn't do oh. it. Yeah, I, I hated turning her down because I had so much fun, but uh, yeah, I couldn't do it. And I don't know if she's found anybody else to do it, so uh, maybe she'll well, change it and do it a different day. Then I might that would be, able be nice. To do it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you make a great Santa, amigo. You make a really great Santa. Well, I, it's oh. it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and I've got the of white course. hair. It helps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, look. As we wrap it up, and speaking of that, okay, um, and, and and you know, I'm going to say words and you know, let you chip in. Uh, Rob and I both want to thank all our loyal airmen out there, all our, our colleagues, uh, particularly all those people who, who go out of their way to buy and support Airship 27 books. Uh, we can't thank you enough. All right. No. I mean, this is this this whole experience and project has been a joy for both of us, a blessing for both of us. We've made such amazing, amazing friends through this process. So as we get close to you know, one of the greatest holidays um, of the year. We want to wish all of you, every single one of you, uh, Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, whichever way you choose to, to celebrate it, all right? Right. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best, joy and happiness, uh, and hopefully take some of that spirit and carry it out throughout the rest of the year. Uh, I want to, Rob, I, I definitely want to thank uh, Sparky, who makes this show possible, and the entire Zone 4 Family of Podcasts. I know half of those guys, that include our buddy uh, Gordon Demosky and, and, and so many others. Uh, so thanks a lot for, for being there for us. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'll let you have to say, and then we'll say goodnight. Yep. I, I just want to just add that uh, one of my bucket list things uh, for, for life was being a publisher. And by golly, you guys have made that possible by buying our books. We, do, we started doing this kind of on a lark to, to see see what, whether we could do it or not. And uh, we started out going to Windy City with like, what, five books on the table. And now we're, yeah. up, yeah, we're up to almost 150 or so now. So we, we yep. not only we did, we did, didn't just kick the bucket over, we knocked it down the street. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you all so much for making this a, such a... A, a, a wonderful. We're not getting rich, but we're definitely having a lot of fun, and we're uh, we're bringing a lot of a lot of people some joy and uh, happiness with the the stories and, and the art that we uh, make for them. So uh, thank you very much, and and we look forward to giving you even more in the next year. So happy New Year. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, buddy, Chief Engineer, go ahead and sign yeah. off, and I'll follow you. This is Chief Engineer Rob Davis signing off. And Captain Ron says, down ship. This has been a Gonzo Goose production. Bonk!